Well, my next guest is, uh, well, perhaps she's not known to everybody, but I'll tell you what she's going to be known to you after this interview. Melbourne is known as the arts capital of Australia, and rightly so. We're so fortunate here in Victoria, and particularly in Melbourne, to have many professional and independent performing uh, arts centres and companies right across the state. My next guest is, is no exception to that. She's part of Geelong's elite independent performing arts company, Door, uh, Doorstep Arm, it's called. And from the 5th of May, they're presenting a fresh new musical, Dogfight. Now, it's based on the 1991 movie, the cult movie of the same name. It's going to be appearing at Chapel of Chapel. It's a heartwarming story of idealism, unexpected love, and, uh, well, it's early adulthood, I suppose, and all set against the background of the Vietnam War. To tell us more about her involvement in Dogfight, we welcome my next guest. Olivia Shalalam, it's nice to have you with us today on the program. How are you? Good, thank you. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure. It's a pleasure. Thank you very, very much for taking time out. Well, you've had quite an exciting career too. You graduated from NIDA, I notice, in 2013 and done lots of things since then. Yes, been a bit busy here and there. <laughs> yeah, my word. Uh, Lay is one of those that comes to mind that you were in? Yes, well, I was quite young then. I was six was my first show. So... You were six? Six years old. At the time, I was one of the youngest in the world to play Little Eponine, so very lucky at a young wow, age. isn't that wonderful? Yes, very wonderful. It was a very good experience for me. I'm not going to ask you how old you are now, because uh, <laughs> that would be giving it all away. But at the age of six to be the youngest, uh, that, that is some record to, to have. Um, reading through your bio, of course, you had uh, Spring Awakening, you've uh, had Space Cats. Jack Irish, one of my favourite TV shows on the ABC, you, you've been in that too. What did you play yeah. in Jack Irish? I was uh, one of the churchgoers. I played the role of Jess. Yep. Uh, so, look, it was a, it was a small role, but a, a pivotal role to um, introduce Jack to the head of the church, which I won't give too much away because it gives a little bit of the story, but mm. a bit of a pivotal moment in episode four. In episode four, okay, okay. Well, we'll look out for that too. Yes. This uh, dogfight that's uh, coming up at Chapel Off Chapel looks like and reads quite uh, quite well. I can't wait to come along and see because it's set back in, uh, what, the 21st of November, 1963. Tell me something that's about correct. it. correct. Yes, yeah, so the show, yes, it's set in 1963 um, in San Francisco. It's a, a, the final night for a group of Marines who are about to set off to Okinawa before they go and join the Vietnam War. And the boys have decided to throw a party, um, you know, the last hurrah before they go off. And they, um, they all put in a cash prize. Um, so whoever brings the ugliest date wins the prize. And our lead... <laughs> Uh, Marine uh, Eddie Birdlake, he brings Rose, who I'm playing. Um, yes. Shy, but she's a very strong girl. Yeah. And she changes the rules of the story and the rules of the game and, and teaches Eddie a lesson. So, you know, it's a misconception. People think that the show is quite misogynistic, but you have to come and see to get the real heart of the story. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You're the waitress, aren't you? I'm the waitress. Yeah, you're the waitress. I'm Rose. Yeah, yeah, you're Rose the waitress. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it'll be a tale of uh, two cities almost, won't it? A bit almost. of a turnaround. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, of course, set uh, against the Vietnam War too, it's a, a very topical uh, area for us because uh, a lot of people, you know, in my age group, for instance, served in Vietnam. Absolutely. I mean, even my dad was almost sent off to Vietnam, so mm. there is a little, a little connection there as well. And even, you know, talking about from my point of the story about um, women's rights movement um, in the 60s and, yes. you know, we're kind of still fighting that battle. So something that we can still connect to now. Well, we had Jermaine Greer in those days, didn't we, who was right yes. out there for the women. And uh, I think she still is these days. And yeah, absolutely. Still doing her um, her thing. Tell me something about the, uh, the production company that you're a member of here, because uh, it's one that I haven't heard of before, the Doorstep uh, Arts um, group. Uh, yeah, when, so when were they formed? I, look, I'm not too sure exactly when they were formed, but um, last year they did Next to Normal uh, in Geelong and took it to the Hayes Theatre in Sydney. So we're mm -hmm. doing some great things up there. Um, won lots of awards. It was a beautiful production. And so when I saw the um, audition brief come out for uh, Dog Dogfight, I was more than excited to apply for it, knowing that the company had already produced such um, critically so it's very exciting to be part of um, a fresh and new group that's, uh, you know, making waves in, in Melbourne. So it's very exciting. Mm, and I think for an actor, it's, it's great to be able to get out there and uh, you know, produce your craft, show us your craft and your talent, and uh, to, to be employed rather than be unemployed and doing something. Absolutely. And 
everyone, look, I'm a big um, believer in making your own work. I'm losing your line there a little bit. Uh, did you move away from the phone there? It's a very, very bumpy line to us. Oh, I'm sorry. That's that's all right. Yeah. Are you on a speakerphone, are you? Or? I'm not on a speakerphone. No. Okay, I've got you now, I think. You've got me now, okay. Yeah, that's a little bit better. Yeah, pretty good. <laughs> sorry about so, that. How did you get started in show business? What, what, what was your path? Uh, well, I'm a fan, Olivia, it is. We are breaking up, uh, and I don't know whether we can continue because the um, the audio is dropping out. I was having oh another... no! Can you still hear me? Yeah, I've got you now. I've got All you right, now. I'll try not to move anywhere. You might have moved out of the shopping centre to the car park now. <laughs> <laughs> I got you now. Well, you got me. That sounds yeah, a lot so better. I was um, very lucky to be um, grown up in a family where um, music theatre was was always around in music and dance and acting. So my What's, so was, your parents were involved, were they, or your siblings? No, they were just passionate um, performers in their own mind. Um, and my sister, Lisa Marie Parker, studied at VCA, classical music. Right. So I was kind of taught by her in the beginning, and she encouraged me to audition for Les Mis, and it never really ended. And now our family is blooming with more performers and... And the creative, so it's very exciting. Yeah, isn't that wonderful? Uh, I had on earlier today uh, Darren Tyler, and uh, Darren's a local boy, um, uh, went to, to school down here at Hallam, and uh, he's been uh, playing in Fiddler on the Roof. And and I said to him, much the same as I've said to you, you know, where did you get to start, and did you, your parents push you at all? And he said, no, he really wanted to do this himself. What was it like from your part? You, you were saying your parents encouraged you. Were you Absolutely. ever told to get your practice done, or, or you just wanted to go and do it? I came from a quite a nurturing family. My parents didn't get the opportunity to do what they wanted. So they said to me and my sister, if you want to do this, that's what you got to do. And they've never pushed me to the point that I don't want to do it, but they've always been absolutely encouraging behind me every step of the way. So I'm very, very lucky. Uh, that's lovely, isn't it? Yeah, it's been great. <laughs> you know, from talking to a lot of actors on this program, that, that's the story I get back all the time, that they wanted to do it and they've had encouraging parents who backed them all the way. And, yeah. uh, and I think that is, is wonderful. You must have some downtime. Um, when you've got downtime, what do you do? Um, look, a variety of things. I... Um, recently started my own production company actually um so i do online videos uh that are mockumentary style so i like to do a bit of comedy so that's something i like to work on when i'm not kind of performing i mean it is part of performing but it keeps me entertained and it's become a hobby of mine so that's that's pretty good and also i do a little bit of teaching for acting and you know when you're not working as an actor yeah, you're, well done. you're in a retail job <laughs> yeah, well very very good and you pass on your uh, knowledge and your skills to uh, to somebody else now you're opening at uh, chapel off chapel on the 5th of may it's running for 10 right. days or 10 yep. nights until the 15th so we'll look forward to that very very much i'll pop down and have a look at that one dog oh, fight brilliant I, thank you mm, i think it'll be a, a great show reading uh, all of the the blurb I've had here on it, it uh, looks very, very interesting indeed. Olivia, I do thank you for your time today. All the best with this one. Uh, break a leg. Thank you. And, thank uh, you so much. go for it, and we'll be watching you on stage. <laughs> Beautiful. Okay. Thanks so you much. You take care. Thank you, dear. Right, bye. Bye-bye to you.